Hi, I'm Louise Coots, and I'm a Senior Research Associate at the Alan Turing Institute, working in collaboration with the Clinical Trials Unit at UCL. The project I'm currently working on is focused on investigating how machine learning can be used in randomised controlled trials. In particular, the aspect that I'm working on is how machine learning can be used to improve monitoring of clinical trial conduct of sites taking part in trials. It's really important that sites taking part in clinical trials run trials in a safe and robust manner, both to protect patients taking part in trials and to ensure that data is collected and recorded reliably and accurately. For large scale trials, the trial will be overseen by a clinical trial unit, such as the one we're working with at UCL. Monitoring teams at clinical trial units follow established guidelines and procedures and will visit sites if they suspect poor performance to investigate. However, for large scale clinical trials, there can be hundreds of sites taking part. So it can be a complex process deciding which sites to prioritize for a monitoring visit. Visiting a site typically involves months of preparation by the staff at the site and also by the monitoring team who will examine all of the trial documentation and data at the site to check for issues and put in place a plan for how any issues can be rectified. So visiting a site is both expensive and time consuming for all involved. To select which of the sites to visit, Currently, a number of metrics are used to calculate performance of different aspects of running a trial, such as whether data has been returned in a prompt manner, whether different forms have been completed and returned, and whether there's any data missing. The team used thresholds for each of these measures, and if two or more of these metrics have exceeded their threshold, then typically the team will decide that a visit to that site is in order. A recent study investigating the ability of these metrics to distinguish sites that were performing poorly uncovered little difference in the number of issues found during a site visit between those where the upfront metrics indicated poor performance and matched sites that didn't indicate poor performance, indicating that the current use of the metrics is no better than chance at selecting whether a site requires a visit. So we've been tasked with investigating whether machine learning can aid and improve this decision-making process. So far, we've developed machine learning models that use just the metrics currently used by the monitoring team and with the aid of a super learner model that incorporates a number of different, different techniques, such as SVM, LSTM, Random Forest and XGBoost, we've achieved an accuracy of 83% when deciding whether a site requires a visit or not. We use known outcomes of past sites monitoring visits as the ground truth to train the model. By using a stacked super learner model approach, we can exploit the potential of multiple different types of estimators, which is really helpful in applications like this, where we have a very low number of data samples because we're limited by the number of sites that have been visited to use as our ground truth. We're now in the process of taking this a step further. So the model will be able to offer more information than simply whether a site requires a visit or not. By making use of the wealth of raw clinical trial data that the metrics are derived from and knowledge of the issues found at previously conducted monitoring visits, we're working on developing the model to be able to predict the types of issues that will be found at a site if it were visited, such as whether the correct versions of forms are being used or whether they're being completed correctly. This is more challenging as it's a very large complex data set with a mix of numerical and text-based data. So we're starting to implement additional techniques such as NLP to exploit this data set to its full potential. The ultimate aim of this is that we build a model that's transferable to other clinical trials with a base function that provides a starting point to provide information to the monitoring team as a new clinical trial starts. And with the model able to learn in a trial specific manner as data is collected for each trial. So we recognize that this may have potential in other fields too, where monitoring is also required. So we'd be very interested to speak with anyone who may see potential users of this in other fields. So if you're interested in discussing this project further, 
please do contact me on the email at the bottom of the slide, lcoot at turing.ac.uk. Thank you for listening. <laughs>